letting them play. So it's been a good week for us. Um, you know, we'll dial it down a little bit Thursday and Friday, and then uh, ramp it up Saturday with a, a very similar preseason game uh, as we had the following Saturday. Um, as far as injuries go, you know, uh, you saw Austin Jackson come back. We gave him uh, about eight to nine periods today. Um, we'll give him another eight to nine tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll get him back full speed uh, by by next week. Um, Jake Lichtenstein is actually making a, a nice comeback. I think he'll be ready next week. Uh, you saw us shut down Andrew Voorhees. Um, he'll be back hopefully by next week. We're going to let that knee calm down. Uh, and everybody else is kind of status quo uh, right now. Uh, so with that, I'll answer any questions that you got. Is there a, like a target date or anything with Daniel Uh No, I, I really don't have a crystal ball. It's kind of how he feels. You know, he's, he's working through. He's medically cleared to do what he's doing right now. Um, we're staying away from contact until he truly feels comfortable. Uh, with it, and, but he's getting more and more each and every day. He's doing a little bit of contact drill work, um, people leaning on him, uh, trying to get all that strength back in that leg, and uh, he gets more and more confidence every day, but I, I really don't have to press the ball until he feels right about it. Is it forever? Um, Clayton had, uh, yeah, a little bit of a back, so we, we pulled him uh, today. I'm sorry about that, Dan. Yeah, we pulled him for a day. With Daniel, is it the same injury, or has he had, like, issues flaring up? It's, or... the, same, it's the same injury. It's the same injury that uh, just, you know, we're trying to, we committed to, uh, you know, shutting it down for an extended period of time. Now it's building back up. It kind of reminds you of, you know, where we were with Corey when he came back from track. You know, trying to get him back in great football shape and not rushing the process. We, know, we want a 100% thing, and I'm committed to that for him. It's been a week mm -hmm. uh, since Porter got his surgery. How's his rehab? Uh, do, doing well. <laughs> he's he's uh, he's there daylight till dark rehabbing it. Um, you know, I, I've always thought Porter is one of the hardest workers you'll ever see, whether it comes to strength and conditioning or uh, the rehab phase when he's been injured. And, uh, there's nobody working harder to get back. Uh, he's on schedule. Is there more to the play in the, uh, either the crowd noise than just the sound, but it's more of a getting them comfortable on the road? Yeah, really it's a couple things. Uh, one, it is we do know that the second, third, and fifth game is going to be some hostile atmospheres. Um, we also like to see, you know, you, you get so, well, I've been there as an assistant coach for 20 years, and it, you, it's so hard not to help, you know, when you get that play signal in and you see a guy who's not aligned perfectly to try to get him coached up. Well, we also got to be able to see the reality of who's doing things right and who's not quite there yet. So this week is about that. You know, we've got pretty much the entire playbook in, um, and, you know, we're allowing to see who, who's got it. It, it, without the coaches being able to say, hey, why now? Uh, tighten down. Hey, you got an out route. You know, I, I want them to be able to function and see what they want. Has anyone asserted themselves in the running back group, or do you see this maybe more of a collaboration than um, last year with Rojo dominating the carries? I tell you what, I said the defense and the coaches came in today and said, Coach, I don't know what you said to the three running backs, but they played them yesterday. Um, and they were very impressive uh, yesterday. We, we had a, a huge uh, run emphasis in that full padded practice with some lives, uh, live reps and tackling. And I, I love the attitude that they brought. It's, you know, you've got some really um, uh, aggressive, tough runners with by and said, and then you got this home run hitter uh, that can do it either, with, either in the run game or uh, in the pass game um, with uh, Steven. You know, so it is a great collaboration to have. And when you're talking about, you know, trying to run the ball 40 times a game and those guys can catch anywhere from six to eight routes a game also, you know, that you got to be able to spread that ball around. Nobody can touch the ball 46 to 48 times. So um, that, that three-man pod right there has got to do a lot for us right now. And they showed it yesterday. They showed their attitude. Some time has passed, but Coach McKay might uh, differ with you on that 40 carry count. <laughs> Well, you, you know, the, the biggest thing for us is to be able to keep guys. You know, we're in a 15-game season. You know, it's not 10 games or 11-game season. It's a 12-game season. We're trying to get to 15. And, be, and because of that, you have to be able to take care of those runners. Um, and uh, it's one of those things. That, there will be times that you look up and a Ronald Jones does carry 25, 30 times last year. It'll be the same thing this time. When a guy's hot, you keep feeding him and feeding him and feeding him. But uh, we're also going to know that uh, with this depth, like I said earlier, that we're going to try to use a lot of folks to stay fresh and to stay explosive.
this set have more of a home run spread this year? It seems like he's had some longer runs in practice. Yeah, he's before. had the best. He's in the best shape of his life. To be honest with you, Joe. Yeah, I mean, he's sitting there, came into camp at 215 pounds, which is not only the heaviest he's been, but also the most explosive in his shape that he's been. So he's been really impressive, and he's breaking through runs. Him and Bai yesterday were breaking tackles. They were getting up to the to the second level and. And actually, um, in Seds, I showed it showed it in a team meeting. He's got a safety coming from his left side, and, and he and he explodes his legs through contacts, gets his shoulders down. Safety just bounces on him, and he, and he makes an explosive run. And that's something that I, I see a little bit different in him right now. Um, that he's able to fight off those those you know those safeties that are trying to go for his legs. He's he's making the pay right now, which is nice to see. You're doing a lot of one on ones. How do you see that with the matchups? Um, we're trying to make it as, as competitive as we can, and I actually, uh, at the start of the team meeting today, showed the one-on-ones yesterday uh, with the wideouts and DBs. We'll have one-on-one -on -one pass rush tomorrow. But we're trying to bring that competitive element that, you know, the, the best player you may face the entire week may be right here on this field. And so that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday has got to be great work together. Um, and you celebrate that. You celebrate the competition. You celebrate the effort. Um, the kids are doing a really nice job. Tyler Petit said that he's seen himself and a lot of the other tight ends get a lot more targets during this camp. Um, do you think that partly a product of having younger quarterbacks who are using that as a, as a check down, or I, just I, how do you see that? I think it's a couple things, to be honest with you. I think, you know, starting last year, we, we tried to get the tight end a little bit more involved within the system. Um, as you know, and you know, we have plays that are specifically designed that they're the first progression read. Um, you know, which is something that you know, when, probably when we first came here, may not have been the case. And uh, so we, we've done a little bit with the system. And, and I credit the quarterbacks for taking what the defense has given them. They're not keying in on just one particular guy. They're they're reading the defenses. They're seeing the matchups. They're seeing the one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And you know how it is when you play too high coverage sometimes, you're getting that tight end matched up on that Mike linebacker. And that's a win for us. You know, when you're talking about a Josh Fala or a Tyler Petit or a Daniel Lord of Bebe and an Eric Cromo, those are six foot five plus bodies, 240, 250 pounds that, you know, are very athletic if you get open. So credit to the quarterbacks. I think part system, part quarterback make the decision. You mentioned set breaking tackles. That was something Ronald picked up on last yeah. year. Why does it take guys some time to, to figure out that part of the game? Well, I, I think a lot of it comes with strength. You know, a lot, not a lot of times when you think about where we were with Rojo and, and so, you know, we didn't get the chance to They had to play early, and, and they get stronger and stronger. Right? There's a big difference between an 18-year-old and a 21, 22-year-old man. Uh, there's a huge difference. And you learn how to run, uh, you run behind your pads. You get stronger in the weight room. You get more explosive. And, I, and, and credit to Ivan Lewis and credit, credit the running back coaches that have been here. I think they've done a good job developing our players. And that's why you see our guys go. I think of Buck Allen, and Justin Davis, and Ronald Jones, and said, where will be the next one? That will be playing on Sunday. So um, you come here to get developed. And that's what those backs have done. One more. Do you have a time to go on that? Say, say that one. Do you have a time for the Lola Batista? No, I, I think it's going to be um, longer. Than, um, than you know, probably in a couple of weeks. It, it's, you know, we went through two hip surgeries, and uh, usually those are six months process at best. Um, and uh, so I don't think you know. I'm hoping that someone can see even you know he's feeling good, but uh, we'll take it day to day. We 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 went into that surgery for the long haul for, for him. It's like that, so that uh, when he feels comfortable, we'll put him back. But I think it's the latter rather than. Him. He's been a redshirt candidate then? He's not been redshirt. Yeah. yeah, so he would be one of those guys that could get four games late in the season, help us out, and still be redshirt. Yeah. Like that would be a great goal, yeah. uh, ultimate goal to have. Uh, but, you know, uh, two things, like I always say, is going to happen. One, the doctors are going to clear him, and two, the players going to be comfortable enough to go out there. And until both those happen, then we'll see. Okay. All righty, guys. Thank you.